The Other Gods by H. P. Lovecraft. Written 14th of August 1921. Published November 1933 in The Fantasy Fan. Volume 1, Number 3. Atop the tallest of Earth's peaks dwell the gods of Earth, and suffer not man to tell that he hath looked upon them. Lesser peaks they once inhabited, but ever the men from the plains would scale the slopes of rock and snow, driving the gods to higher and higher mountains, till now only the last remains. When they left their old peaks, they took with them all signs of themselves, save once, it is said, when they left a carven image on the face of a mountain which they called Negranek. But now they have betaken themselves to unknown Kadaf in the cold waste where no man treads, and are grown stern, having no higher peak where to flee at the coming of men. They are grown stern, and where they once suffered men to displace them, they now forbid men to come, or coming to depart. It is well for men that they know not of Kadaf in the cold waste, else they would seek injudiciously to scale it. Sometimes, when earth's gods are homesick, they visit in the still of night the peaks where they once dwelled, and weep softly as they try to play in the olden way on remembered slopes. Men have felt the tears of the gods on white-capped Turai, though they have thought it rain, and have heard the sighs of the gods in the plaintive dawn winds of Lerion. In cloud ships the gods are wont to travel, and wise cotters have legends that keep them from certain high peaks at night when it is cloudy, for the gods are not lenient as of old. In Ulfar, which lies beyond the river sky, once dwelt an old man avid to behold the gods of earth, a man deeply learned in the seven cryptical books of earth, and familiar with the narcotic manuscripts of distant and frozen Lomar. His name was Barzai the Wise, and the villagers tell of how he went up a mountain on the night of the strange eclipse. Barzai knew so much of the gods that he could tell of their comings and goings and guessed so many of their secrets that he seemed to be a god himself. It was he who wisely advised the burgesses of Ulfar when they passed the remarkable law against the slaying of cats, and who first told the young priest Atal where it is that black cats go at a midnight on St. John's Eve. Barzai was learned in the lore of the earth's gods, and had gained a desire to look upon their faces. He believed that his great knowledge of the gods could shield them from their wrath, so resolved to go up on the summit of high and rocky Hafleg Kla on a night when he knew the gods would be there. Hafeg Kla is far in the stony desert beyond Hafeg, for which it is named, and rises like a rock statue in a silent temple. Around its peak the mists play always mournfully, for mists are the memories of the gods, and the gods loved Hafleg Kla when they dwelt upon it in the old days. Often the gods of earth visit Hafleck Kla in their ships of clouds, casting pale vapor over the slopes as they dance reminiscently of the summit under a clear moon. The villagers of Hafeg say it is ill to climb the Hafeg Kla at any time, and deadly to climb it by night when pale vapors hide the summit and the moon. But Barzai heeded them not when he came from neighboring Ulfar with the young priest Atal, who was his disciple. Atal was only the son of an innkeeper, and was sometimes afraid. But Barzai's father had been a landgrave who dwelt in an ancient castle, so he had no common superstition in his blood, and only laughed at the fearful cotters. Barzai and Atal went out of Hafeg into the stony desert, despite the prayers of peasants, and talked of earth's gods by the campfires at night. Many days they traveled, and from afar saw lofty Hafekla and his aureole of mournful mist. On the thirteenth day they reached the mountain's lonely base, and Atal spoke of his fears. But Barzai was old and learned, and had no fears, so led up the way up the slope that no man had scaled since the time of Sansu, who is written off with fright in the moldy narcotic manuscripts. The way was rocky, and made perilous by chasms, cliffs, and falling stones. Later it grew cold and snowy, and Barzai and Atal often slipped and fell as they hewed and plodded upward with staves and axes. Finally the air grew thin, and the sky changed color, and the climbers found it difficult to breathe. 
but still they toiled up and up, marveling at the strangeness of the scene, and thrilling at the thought of what would happen on the summit when the moon was out and the pale vapors spread around. For three days they climbed higher and higher towards the roof of the world. Then they camped to wait for the clouding of the moon. For four nights no clouds shone, and the moon shone down cold through the thin mournful mist around the silent pinnacle. And then, on the fifth night, which was the night of the full moon, Barzai saw some dense clouds far to the north, and stayed up with Atal to watch them draw near. Thick and majestic they sailed, slowly and deliberately onward, ranging themselves round the high peak above the watchers, and hiding the moon and the summit from view. For a long hour the watchers gazed, while the vapors swirled and the screen of clouds grew thicker and more restless. Barzai was wise in the lore of Earth's gods, and listened hard for certain sounds. But Atal felt the chill of the vapors and the awe of the night, and feared much. And when Barzai began to climb higher and beckon eagerly, it was long before Atal would follow. So thick were the vapors that the way was hard, and though Atal followed at last, he could scarcely see the grey shape of Barzai on the dim slope above in the clouded moonlight. Barzai forged very far ahead, and seemed despite his age to climb more easily than Atal. Fearing not the steepness that began to grow too great for any save a strong and dauntless man, nor pausing at wide black chasms that Atal could scarcely leap. And so they went up wildly over rock and gulf, slipping and stumbling, and sometimes awed at the vastness and horrible silence of bleak ice pinnacles and mute granite steeps. Very suddenly Barzai went out of the sight of Atal, scaling a hideous cliff that seemed to bulge outward and block the path for any climber not inspired of Earth's gods. Atal was far below, and planning what he should do when he reached the place, when curiously he noticed that the light had grown strong, as if the cloudless peaks and moonlit meeting places of the gods were very near. And as he scrambled on towards the bulging cliff and litten sky, he felt fears more shocking than any he had known before. Then through the high mists he heard a voice of Barzai shouting wildly in delight. I have heard the gods! I have heard Earth's gods singing in the revelry on Hafeg Kla. The voices of Earth's gods are known to Barzai the prophet. The mists are thin and the moon is bright and I shall see the gods dancing wildly on half a claw that they loved in youth. The wisdom of Barzai hath made him greater than earth's gods, and against his will their spells and barriers are as naught. Barzai will behold the gods, the proud gods, the secret gods, the gods of the earth who spurn the sight of man. Atal could not hear the voices Barzai heard, but he was now close to the bulging cliff and scanning it for footholds. Then he heard Barzai's voice grow shriller and louder. The mist is very thin, and the moon casts shadows on the slope. The voices of Earth's gods are high and wild, and they fear the coming of Barzai the wise, who is greater than they. The moon's light flickers as Earth's gods dance against it. I shall see the dancing forms of the gods that leap and howl in the moonlight. The light is dimmer, and the gods are afraid. While Barzai was shouting these things, Atal felt a spectral change in the air, as if the laws of earth were bowing to greater laws. For though the way was now steeper than ever, the upward path was now grown fearsomely easy and the bulging cliff proved scarce an obstacle when he reached it, and slid perilously up its convex face. The light of the moon had strangely failed, and as Atal plunged upward through the mists, he heard Barzai the wise shrieking in the shadows. The moon is dark, and the gods dance in the night. There is terror in the sky, for upon the moon have sunk an eclipse foretold in no books of men or of earth's gods. There is unknown magic on Hafleg Kla, for the screams of the frightened gods have turned to laughter, and the slopes of ice shoot up endlessly into the black heavens, whither I am plunging. Hey, hey, at last, 
In the dim light I behold the gods of earth. And now Atal, slipping dizzily up over inconceivable steeps, heard in the dark a loathsome laughing, mixed with such a cry as no man else ever heard save in the phlegaton of unrelatable nightmares, a cry wherein reverberated the horror and anguish of a haunted lifetime packed into one atrocious moment. The other gods, the other gods, the gods of the outer hells that guard the feeble gods of earth, Look away, go back, do not see, do not see, the vengeance of the infinite abysses, that cursed, that damnable pit. Merciful gods of earth, I am falling into the sky. And as Atal shut his eyes and stopped his ears and tried to hump downwards against the frightful pull from unknown heights, there responded on half lecla that terrible peal of thunder which awakened the good cutters of the plains and the honest burgesses of Hafeg, Nir and Ulfar too, and caused them to behold through the clouds that strange eclipse of the moon that no book ever predicted. And when the moon came out at last, Atal was safe on the lower snows of the mountain, without sight of the earth's gods or of the other gods. Now it is told in the moldy narcotic manuscripts that Sansu found naught but wordless ice and rock, when he did climb half a claw in the youth of the world. Yet when the men of Ulfar and Nir and Haveg crushed their fears and scaled that haunted steep by day in search of Barzai the Wise, they found graven in the naked stone of the summit a curious encyclopian symbol, fifty cubits wide, as if the rock had been riven by some titanic chisel. And the symbol was like the one that learned men have discerned in those frightful parts of the narcotic manuscripts which were too ancient to read. This they found. Barzai the Wise was never found, nor could the holy priest Atal ever be persuaded to pray for the soul's repose. Moreover, to this day, the people of Ulfar and Nir and Hafeg fear eclipses, and pray by night when pale vapors hide the mountain top and the moon. And above the mists on Hafeg La, Earth's gods sometimes dance reminiscently, for they know they are safe, and love to come from unknown cut-off in ships of clouds and play in the olden way, as they did when earth was new and men were not given to the climbing of inaccessible spaces.